Hi guys, it's Mitch here. I'm just coming on to do this week's Facebook card reveals for you all. So this week I'm working with a brand new deck, which is my own deck, which is the Don't Dream It Be It Major Arcana Unofficial Rocky Horror Show Tarot Inspired um, themed deck. So this deck, just to let you know, is available to pre-order. It's £40. It's an unlimited edition print run. If you're interested, if you're a fan of Rocky Horror Show, either the film or the musical version, then drop me a message. We can get this booked in for you and get you on the print run. If you have purchased already, thank you so, so much. So let's have a look at the cards and the messages for this week. So as we're going into card one, we're going into the energy of the Emperor. So the Emperor card, this is all about natural born leadership. It's about ambition, boundaries. There's a sense of determination. So it's perfect for the character of a Frankenfurter in this deck. Now, the Emperor is also seen as the father figure of the tarot. And, you know, sometimes when choices, when decisions are made, they're not always celebrated, they're not always welcomed, but essentially the emperor has to do what he has to do in order to exist, in order to survive, and in order to run the show, essentially, his own way, his or her own way. Um, so, so it's perfect for the character of Frank, like I sort of say. But potentially in terms of its message for you this week, this is about you staying in control, this is about you putting yourself first, it's knowing your worth, and it's doing what you need to do to make your sort of world work on your format, on your terms. You may not always be liked for the choices or the decisions that you're having to make, but you actually know the reasons as to why you're doing what you're doing. That is the other aspect of this card, you know, so you're not necessarily doing things to be selfish or to be sort of unfavoured, but you're doing things for actually what you feel could be the greater of good in the long run. So there's method in the madness, even if it's not always clear. So an interesting card to show for you, this one. Now, as we're sort of moving into card two, we're going into the energy of the tower. Now, when the tower card shows, this is usually a card that represents unexpected changes. And sometimes this could be really positive. Sometimes it can be seen as a little bit negative. It kind of depends on, you know, I suppose, particularly when we're looking at it from the film perspective, who you're rooting for here. But also this is about, you know, um, when we look at this in terms of is things negative or, or positive, sometimes they start off a little bit negative to begin with, but it leads on to greater levels of positivity. Because sometimes when things come in to sort of disturb, cause a little bit of a change, it can not always be welcomed at first glance, but actually it can go on to set us free from stuff. So that's the other thing with the tower. Sometimes it comes in to actually set us free, even though it might have felt and it might have seemed quite aggressive at the time. Now for this particular card, just to talk about the artwork quickly in this particular deck, um, I've used the characters of Brad and Janet, and this is at the end of the film, and the house, which is also actually the spaceship, is D is beamed back up into, um, you know, that sort of galaxy of transsexual um, in the land of Transylvania. And um, it's sort of sent back to where it's, whence it came from, um, essentially. So, yeah, this is a powerful one. And they're sort of, you know, left in the rubbish, in the ruin, in the wreckage of everything, you know, as it sort of splits and it sort of gets sent back up. And I suppose when we look at this, it's a, it's a great sort of character to use for this particular card, because in the earlier part of the story, Bran and Janet come across this house, they come across this castle, and all they want to do is use the phone because their car, their car has broken down. And, you know, they, they never thought that they would find themselves here when they went in to just try and use a phone, you know. So they've been on a massive journey and um, it's been an eye opener, hasn't it, really, for them. But actually, through all of the madness and all the crazy stuff, they have survived. Um, so this is also a card of actually what doesn't kill us does make us stronger. So the tower is always quite interesting when it comes forward. Um you know, and, and sometimes they can be chaos, dramatic change, but it doesn't mean that what unfolds or follows has to be bad or negative, um, you know. So, yeah, so there may be some big stuff you're sort of working through and, and shifting through and it might be testing you. But remember, these characters, they live at the end, you know, not everyone makes it in the story, but these guys do. So that's a good way to look at this card as well. 
And finally, as we're moving into card three, we're going into the energy of justice. I absolutely love the justice card when it sort of shows um, in the, uh, the tarot. It's one of my actual favourite cards, believe it or not. And what's great with the, uh, the justice card when it sort of shows here, this is all about equality, law and order, karma, balance, restoration. It's almost like karma is coming in to kick anything's ass. The truth is being revealed. The truth is being exposed and justice is being had in its way. So maybe you're working through at the moment some kind of really big injustice. And if you are, then obviously, you know, stay focused, hold your own and know that karma will expose, will restore the balance, the law and order. And, you know, you'll have the injustices put right, whatever you're going through. Those could be very small. They could be very minor, but they could be bigger injustices. Sometimes they could even be legal battles that maybe you're going through or up against. But you'll know where they sit for you. So with this card, we use the character of um, Dr. Everett Scott. And what's great with this is obviously he goes into the castle, essentially looking for his nephew, Eddie. And as we can see, Eddie, unfortunately, had a cruel twist of fate and, you know, has been chopped up into um, a couple of pieces there, you know. And so we have the song in the show of Eddie's Teddy. So this is obviously pictated all here in the card, as you can see. But even though Eddie is dead, um, what is quite important is actually Dr. Everett Scott, he does get the injustice put right. He does get, you know, that sort of karmatic energy put into order because actually a few things happen. The truth is exposed here with Eddie, you know, so everybody can see what's been happening. They've been eating him during Frank's meal. Um, sorry, if you've not seen this, I'm giving away a lot of the story here, but it dictates in the card and, you know, why it all sort of comes into its own. But at the end of the show, certain characters are penalised and are punished, and um, the truth is out there. And also, Dr Everett Scott survives, he walks away. So, you know, actually, everything is put right, there's law and order, and, you know, just to go very quickly into it, obviously, Riff Raff and Magenta, who are actually kind of hostages of Frank's, they're set free when the house goes back up, like within that tower card. They reclaim back that and they take that back up. So actually, you know, there's a huge there's a huge injustice put right here. So karma does play its part. If you've never seen the film or the musical, you're going to be like, what the bloody hell is he talking about? But hopefully this gives you more reason to look at it. But from, from a message point of view, if you have never seen the show or the film... Just know that karma is on your side. Law and order is being restored and rectified. That's the key piece of this. So I'm going to leave this with you. An interesting set of cards this week. Thank you so, so much to everybody that has been supporting the new deck, though. I know it's not going to be a deck for everybody, but for those people that have been supporting it, thank you very much. I just want to say a couple of cheeky shout outs. So this Saturday, I think I've got like about 15 tickets left now. Um, you can catch me at Ilminster Theatre, which is the Warehouse Theatre in Ilminster, where I'll be doing a beautiful night of mediumship, bringing forward your beautiful loved ones from the other side and reconnecting you with beautiful messages. Just to let you know to those who are coming, there's the car park. There is a bit of an issue with car parking I've been made aware of. Um, in the sense of that there isn't very great car parking. So you may have to park a little bit further out and then sort of walk down to the theatre. So just be mindful of car parking if you're coming to that. You may have to park in the bigger car parks and then walk down. Um, so just be mindful of that. And then Sunday, I'm going to be doing a day of one-to-one -one readings in beautiful Avebury. I love going to Avebury because not only is it a great place to do readings, it's also a beautiful place for me to recharge while I'm there. So looking forward to that. Um, I think I've just got morning spaces available now. All my afternoon spaces are gone. But if you'd like to come and see me in Avebury for a face-to-face in-person reading, drop me a message. Let me see what times I've got left and let's get you booked in. So I've got a really, really busy week, a really fun week. Can't wait. So I will leave it with you. Love and blessings. And I'll see you very soon. Take care, guys. Bye for now.